Hello and welcome. Today we're working on a exam one practice test and this part uses journal entries. So this is the exam uh, you would take at the very beginning of financial accounting or principles of accounting. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn. We're working our way through the principles of accounting series or the financial accounting. So this is introduction to accounting, chapter one, chapter two, recording business transactions. So what do you need to know in that first chapter is terms and like accounting equation. And what do you need to know in the second chapter? Financial statements and doing journal entries. So our entries here, and this is from a test that I gave uh, in a previous semester. And so what we have is we have information, we have transactions, and we need to make journal entries. Now make sure you use good form. So we start with the debits first, and then we'll have a column for all the debit numbers and a column for all the credit numbers and just make sure you're really organized because this is a shorthand. This is not just taking notes. This is a shorthand way of doing something very specific. So we have the Morton Company. The very first month is September, so there's no previous balances. And we're going to make the entry for each of these transactions. So the first one is the owner gives cash of $23,000. So I'm going to debit cash and put $23,000. And they also, the business receives supplies, so supplies goes up, and that is in the amount of 5,000. And you're tempted to take the 2,000 shares, but we're not going to use the 2,000 shares at all. We're going to use a dollar amount, and remember, our debits have to equal our credit. So 23,000 plus 5,000, what we have is debits and credits have to equal, so that total is 28,000. And what is our credit going to be to? Well, our credit is going to be to common stock or something like capital stock would be fine. So here we have the business has received cash and supplies. So both of those go up with debits. And then common stock is an equity account that goes up with a credit. All right, the next one is we bought a six months insurance policy. Now, you're tempted to think, well, is that insurance expense or is that a prepaid insurance? Well, if it's for one month, then we just expense it. We would say insurance expense. But since this is for six months, we call this prepaid insurance. And what type of account is prepaid insurance? Well, it is an asset. So therefore, we need to debit that asset to make it go up. And we're going to credit what? Well, we actually paid cash. So anytime you pay cash, you credit cash. The next one is we perform services and sends a bill or an invoice. Sometimes you might see this sends an invoice. I'm going to change that to the clients for $6,000. Well, we did the work, so it's, it's actually revenue. So we're going to debit what? Well, we're going to debit an account called accounts receivable and credit service revenue. And what amount do we have? Well, it's $6,000. Now, what's the definition of revenue? Revenue is any time you do work and you receive an asset. You have earned it. So you're selling a product or service, and that's revenue. And here, the asset we're receiving is accounts receivable. It's not cash right now. It is accounts receivable. Now, the next one. The company play, pays employees' wages for $2,100. Now, $2,100, and you know cash is going to be involved. And so did we receive cash or did we pay cash? Well, we're the company and we're paying cash, so we know we're going to credit cash, and we're going to debit what? Well, wages expense. So wages expense and cash. Now, if you pay the employees, if they work this month and we pay them next month, if the problem said we pay our employees on October the 5th, that first Friday or whatever it might be, then we would say wages expense and wages payable. But wages expense and cash because it says the company pays and the way you pay is with cash. All right, on the 20th, the company buys equipment on account, so we're going to debit equipment and credit Accounts payable, that's a liability. So equipment is an asset that goes up at 12,000 and accounts payable is a liability that goes up with 12,000. 
So you need to make sure you know your debit and your credit rules to make sure you're in good shape on this. The company declares a dividend of $1,500. The dividend will be paid on October the 15th. We're going to debit dividends and credit dividends payable because that becomes a liability if we declare it and we owe it later, then that's in the amount of $1,500. So dividends and dividends payable, when we declare a dividend, that will be paid later on. All right, on the 25th, we received a payment of $3,500 from the September 10th transaction. Let's go back and look at September 10th. They set up accounts receivable and service revenue. So they're co we're collecting on account, so we know we're going to receive cash. And you're tempted to say, well, this is revenue. We receive cash. Well, we, it's cash received is not the same thing as revenue earned. Revenue is when we do the work. We did the work on September the 10th. So therefore, this is just a collection on accounts receivable. This is collection on accounts receivable right here. We did the work on September the 10th. So cash and accounts receivable in the amount of 3500 and 3500 The very last one, on the 30th, the customer prepays $2,000 for service that will be provided in October. Are we willing to, to let customers prepay? Yes, of course we are. We take cash, 2000 And what do we recognize? Well, on the credit side, is this revenue? Does it meet the definition of it has to be earned? Well, it's not earned yet. In fact, we owe them the money back if we don't provide the service, or we have to provide the service. So this is going to be called unearned revenue. And unearned revenue is what type of account? It's a liability account because we owe them that money back or we owe them that service.